Howdy, everybody. Welcome to the show. I'm Joe Swarner, your customer advocate and your real estate agent today for the basis of Trumbull Valley. Uh, we're going to be taking a pretty close look at what they look like, at uh, some of the choices that were made, and we're going to be presenting them to you in where my current thinking leads me to believe is the the best power ratio. Uh, so we're going to go in what I think is the, their power order from least powerful to most powerful. Uh, and I think a sub, a, some of you out there are going to be a little surprised. Uh, but with us today, we have the interior designer and our esteemed art director, Mr. Brant Fitzgerald. I think it's more interior decorator at this point. Okay. But well, let's let's get let's get the job descriptions correct, Joe, because I'm very sensitive about that. Okay. All right. I'm I'm so sorry, Brant. Interior <laughs> decorator. Let me get. Hello, that. everybody. It's great to see everybody. Uh the uh and of course the 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 the, the esteemed. I always say esteemed. Uh, they they app. I said something else in my notes, but anyway, we love her. <laughs> she's great. Um, and she's the architect for all of the bases in Trumbull to, to the best of my knowledge. And she's done all of the stuff that is making these things seem super awesome to all of you out there and especially us here. Uh, and we love having her on the team. Lucy, would you like to say hello to the people? Hey folks, I am so glad that the update is being received well. Uh, I And I'm really excited to show these bases off because I had a lot of fun making them. All right. Uh, and then I just realized a small problem. I can't look at my own notes, but we're going to start off uh, as we're going around right now. We are at the farmland compound, which I have made my home on this on this group. But this is not where we're starting the conversation. We are going to start it at Checkpoint Delta. So let's move on over to the game screen uh, and let's take a look at this. These lovely flyers that have been uh, coming up on our uh, if you don't, if you're not following us on Twitter, you really should. We've been we've been putting out some some fun stuff, uh, we, our, our YouTube videos as well. But uh, Megan Bishop uh, wrote this stuff here, our our wonderful community manager, um, and she came up with these real estate flyers. Uh, and this one should be for Checkpoint Delta. I hope it's for Checkpoint Delta. Uh, it is because it says free. So anytime you're looking for a new home. You know, coming into Checkpoint Delta in this area is certainly what's going to be helpful. Uh, if we take a look at what Checkpoint Delta is, uh, one of the problems you're going to run into um, is that as soon as you start recruiting anybody, it gets to be a little below there. But let's, uh, I'm going to be quiet now and I'm going to let Lucy and Brant talk about what we're going to see when we go to Checkpoint Delta. Yeah. So with every map, we know we need a starter base. Uh, if, uh, people who've played, the first three maps. So, so any anything but Providence Ridge to this point, you understand that your starter base is always a suburban house, has roughly very similar built-ins, same number of slots. Uh, so we were, uh, but in terms of design, the goal is always to that make sure that base is not the player's final destination, and in especially on this map where we have so many like iconic locations now turned into bases, we wanted to make sure that players had extra incentive to move around. Uh, and the theming of having it be a military checkpoint kind of worked in our favor because there isn't really a whole lot left there. It's been pretty uh, devastated, uh, like a lot of the landscape of Trumbull by the time that our players arrive. So it, we're using all that in mind. Uh, it's definitely the on the less powerful side of our starter bases, but that's also because some of our other bases are very powerful. All right, yeah, so uh, as we approach up, over here. Oh, uh, I'm just going to back up Lucy's statement there. It's uh, the the checkpoint was absolutely a great choice for this because they weren't made for comfort. They're never made for comfort, and uh, anybody who served on a on a checkpoint, uh, we'll know <laughs> that uh, um, even the ones that that we made are uh, are pretty uh, luxurious compared to uh, what they were like in real life. So, all right. So we're gonna try to take a take a look here. Right as you come in, your first introduction to Trumbull Valley is right here at Checkpoint Delta. We're gonna have to clear out some space here. 
All right, so let's pull that away. See, so here's part of it. Did, did I hear a feral? Uh, I hope I hope not. So okay. Sunny Games asked uh, if I made it that way to push people away to other bases, and once again, yes, partially. I I don't want players to hate their experience when they first move in, so I wasn't trying to like deliberately make it terrible. But in terms of uh, you know, c paying attention to how powerful it is relative to other bases on the map, I, I uh, was making was you know uh, my my goal was to make it on the sparser side. Well, and um, you know, Lu Lucy and I, you you and I had discussed how like on other bases uh, there were there were some disparities between say like mid level bases that you had to pay influence yes. for and the. Um, and yeah. the starter base was was that yeah. part of your uh definitely like when i first started playing state of decay 2 the uh, map I, I was introduced to of course was providence ridge which we now use as like our introductory map for players and unfortunately like it had one of the uh not not as strong points of the of that map is just the fact that you know you have a lot of really great high-end bases but it's so difficult to get just from the starter base to the mid-level bases. I wanted to make sure players would, wouldn't have as, as hard of a time getting there, because, especially because of, of all the different, you know, we, we want players to experience all these eventually. Uh, Snyder base, we will, I, uh, I'm not sure. The Snyder, the Snyder trucking warehouse is what they're talking about, Lucy, which was down here on this edge ah. of Marshall, which is where my one of my play cards is at the moment, but, uh, well, so the big yeah, we'll get to the other bases soon. Sorry. All right. Anything more about checkpoint Delta or anything you want me to, to pay attention to here, Brant? Uh, no, um, just that, uh, um, we, uh, we had a lot of fun making the bases this time. There's a great back and forth between everybody involved. Um, I would like to point out that, uh, that Megan, who did create the real estate flyers, also had a major part in lighting them this time. And unlike the bases that I lit, these bases look great when they're lit. Uh, uh, Megan did a beautiful job um, lighting up these bases this time. So thank you, Megan, for that hard work on your part. Yeah, Joe, uh, which which base have you moved into? Because we got to get you some power so that we can show off some Megan's landing at some of these, these later bases. Oh, I moved into the farmland compound, so we can we can talk about that one. Okay. And I figure that's probably being the big one. That that's probably the uh, that's probably the most popular one at the moment uh, for for a lot of the people who are uh, filming in. But uh, sorry, not filming in. Who are tuning in? Uh, so anyway, um, but. Where we're headed next, uh, and the next step in what I would call my my power uh, uh, my power structure here is the uh, second. Uh, next up is we're going to hop over to Pterodactyl Park. Uh, hopefully, we're we're seeing the thing that's that I wanted to see because I'm kind of flying blind a little bit. But, um, Lu Lucy, there's a question. What's your favorite base on the map? Uh, I have. Favorite things about a number of them. I think my top two are Pterodactyl Park and the Tranquility Factory. I definitely had a lot of fun making the facilities with those because we definitely. I feel like we, we got to stretch our wings a bit more creatively there. All right. Uh, so now we are at Pterodactyl Park. This is my favorite base. Uh, let me make sure that I'm doing what needs to be done here. All right. So Pterodactyl Park. It's only 500 influence, and you, it's pretty easy to clear out, considering it's right here in uh, that one place, Spencer's Mill, uh, and it's it's got four small slots, a large slot, actually five, I think, if you count the indoor, and then there's got four up above. Uh, this is what it looks like here, Pterodactyl Park. This is what the base screen looks like. And I'm pretty sure we, we only required five people to move into this space. I think I think that's what I ended up setting it at. Yeah, it's it's pretty low. I think it was yeah. I think it was either five or four. Uh, it's a four person base. Yeah. Lock. We may want to thin out the infestations around here before things get real. Oops. So anyway, yeah. But yeah, once again, uh, you know, focusing on the accessibility. 
Uh, you have the map still up oh. on screen, Joe. Yeah, I was trying to show that. Okay, there we go. So, there we go. Now we're looking around. It's going to be a little messy, but it's got the dinosaurs down here. Here's your large slot that's right at the bat. Uh-oh. That's not one we wanted to hear. Okay, come on through. Come on through. What's he doing? This guy seems to think it's a good plan. Alright, so over here, this is one of my favorite things about this base, is you end up with four slots that are up on the roof. Um, and and just the just all of the things that that sort of are decorative in here. There's a, there's a lot of personality in this base. Um, and once you clear out this area, you've got four slots on the top. You've got a small slot, which I think is technically inside of one of these. I forget where it is, but it's yeah, inside one of these. There's like slot. one or two covered small slots because we wanted to make sure we had at least one small indoor slot for, for facilities that require that. Uh, then the rest of them are on the roof, and it actually introduced some some challenges for us with uh, what built-in facilities and just what regular facilities we wanted to allow there because we have never had small slots elevated like that before where there's things that players can build beneath them. Yeah. Uh, people are asking here and there about the silent latrine, and originally that was not going to be one of its built-in facilities. Uh, until I think myself, Jeffrey, and a couple of other folks in the playtest realized that there was a really weird question we were asking if players could build a latrine on the roof of these trailers. Like, what happens if you, like, build a kitchen <laughs> beneath that? So, I... Uh, then, um, I forget which came first, the, the, the need or the joke, but one afternoon I was just remembering that we have to we could put in a, a p is silent joke <laughs> so we, we, it was like what well, we can make a custom latrine and solve our issue with like where we're allowed to place them uh, in one fell swoop and it makes the base i uh, feel a little bit more i uh, you know it gives it gives it more character i always feel like the bases with the most character are the ones that have their their own special version of, of regular facilities well, and, and this one was definitely like a love letter to uh, all the streaming Jeffrey and I did in the first game, um, where in, uh, we'd always go to Jurassic Junction, you could shoot the pterodactyl and it would fall down, and you'd put it into the back of a pickup truck and try and drive, and I always tried to drive it up here, so, um, and it almost ne I almost never made it. But uh, so the joke goes that they finally made it and posted it proudly. Um, living the dream. Living the dream. So there's a lot of sort of Easter eggy kind of stuff here too. But I really like how they uh, uh, the the fiction of this base or is that um, they uh, they utilized aspects of the Heartland Jurassic Junction base to shore up this one. Um, it's just a lot. It was just a lot of fun. All right, so uh, as we are headed over to our next spot, um, should be, nope, that's Pterodactyl Park still. All right, so the next one we're going to go to is the Red Talon Forward Operating Base. Um, I think this is the third most powerful. It costs you 1500 It can be a little difficult to pull out, but the, it only has one small slot and only one large slot. But what it does do is it's a, it's a great introduction for players who haven't played Daybreak to get used to what those facilities can do for you, right? There's a Clio core that you can uh, that you can use right from the beginning. Uh, there's a bunch of other stuff that I'll let the, the base professionals talk about. Um, <laughs> but essentially, I'm going to leave this up while they're talking about it and while we travel. And then uh, when we get there, I'll take it back down. Okay. I will answer. I will answer one quick question that came up. Um, the heavy weapon on Joe's back is the coffee can mace which you can construct with what combination of facilities, Joe? So the coffee can mace is, it's from the forge, uh, and you have to have metal working, if I remember metal correctly. Metal work, that's right. So, uh, or I guess it's just metal work, not metal working. Sorry about that. 
Uh, I, but yeah, this this base was another um, was one of the crazy idea bucket uh, things we wanted to try with Tremble Valley. Um, for a while, I, Andy uh, from the narrative team was was really wanting to have uh, a base that you could like where the player could interact with mission content to kind of unlock built-in features and this uh, we decided to, th to kind of theme it around uh, Red Talon of course because of the history with the area and um, using just the existing Daybreak facilities was a good kind of starting point because players were already familiar with them like we said and not very many not um, like we don't we don't expect uh, um, the majority of the player base to have tried Daybreak and or find Daybreak fun because everyone's taste in gaming is different. Uh, so this is a great chance for players to kind of uh, experience that. Although it's, we had to make some uh, concessions to make sure that it wasn't like more powerful necessarily than the existing facilities uh, because, you know, these ones are locked down. The other ones you can pick up um, and the I uh, let's see the, the other th I'm losing my notes here uh, we, and it, yeah we also named them a little bit differently to make up for that because we didn't want players just confusing um, like going and expecting these facilities to be a hundred percent the same as the ones you could buy from daybreak and feel like their their um, prestige was wasted on on buying those yeah so here we are at the Red Talon forward operating base. And so as you can see here, there are a couple of spots. Uh, once you clear that out, that becomes your small slot over there. So once that once that little uh, connex over there is, is cleaned up, that becomes your small slot. Um, now, one of the great things about this is these th are these facilities down here. You can call in help uh, to get them all back up and running uh, and you get to interact again with Chavez. It's super great. Um, I don't want to go too far into what the narrative is because I think Jeffrey's going to be covering that in our next official stream. So I don't want to talk too much about it. But you come down here, uh, you get some help from Chavez, you complete a bunch of missions. Uh, and probably my favorite thing about this base, um, my favorite thing about this base is that right there. So when the power is on, this thing lights up like a Christmas tree, literally like red, green, and white. And you can see it from like halfway across, uh, like halfway across Fairfield. It is absolutely beautiful at night. Uh, and then with this, with this backdrop here against Mount Tanner, it's it's one of my favorite spots in the game. It's just absolutely beautiful over here. Yeah, that was uh, that was uh, the Valkyrie team who's been helping us out with content. Um, they came in and and they did some auxiliary help with lighting the bases and. And one day, one of them's like, "Do you want the uh, the Ferris wheel to light up?" And I'm like, "Why? If I ever said no, I'd quit my job, right?" So uh, who, who they made the that? yeah, they made the colored lights, and um, and it looks fantastic, and I love it. Now, I've also been on this base a couple of times, and in terms of strategy, uh, this is this this little thing right here has come in super helpful more than one more than once I'm, I'm sad to say or maybe i'm happy to say it i don't know but this little, little thing this little thing this wall like the way we yeah, just the way we the, just the climb over wall. it well i mean it's it's supposed to be a, a daybreak forward operating base so this was um it like the, was, the earliest yeah. version base didn't yeah. have regular doors either right it was just <laughs> we need we needed to, to put real doors in it for the sake of sieges unfortunately sorry players but uh yeah. it was it was fun while it lasted it would yeah. be, it would be it would be sad if the only if the only uh if the only things that could get over the wall were ferals right make all sieges just fully ferals <laughs> yeah especially uh, here's, though there here's were a couple a question. questions yeah, yeah. Does the uh, does the Cleo core in this in this base cost prestige? It does not. It costs influence instead. And just uh, like as we mentioned, how we, we we don't expect the majority of players to. We don't want to force players to play Daybreak either in order to experience the, all of the base's content. So if they if you don't have prestige points, you don't need them on this base. I uh, you can just spend influence. It still costs. Um, I think 
it, it costs a little bit more in terms of influence to prestige ratio that, than uh, than you're used to with just spending prestige points, but it's um, still cheap enough that I, I feel like you'll get the benefit you want out of it. Um, the we, we definitely talked about whether or not we wanted to incorporate any kind of prestige thing into this base and with the other risks that were involved in it, uh, we, we we lean towards no, but the that doesn't it doesn't mean we will necessarily uh, say no to that forever. We might we might look at it in the future. The other thing I liked about this base was uh, I had to create some new uh, some new art objects for it to to help me uh, um, flesh out the stuff, and I used that opportunity to update the look of all the daybreak facilities that you got from playing daybreak as well so they've all gotten a fresh coat of paint um in the uh the red talon color scheme i caught a little bit of hell on reddit for it but um but you know that's the price you pay <laughs> who doesn't catch hell on reddit when a new thing truth. is out there truth. right like somebody's gonna not like it somewhere uh uh, so we had another question about why the only the Red Talon base has quests for upgrades. And uh, the simple answer is because we had never done it before. Um, we had to do some, we, ha we had to kind of put our facility system to the limits with making this content happen. And uh, when we make new missions, we also, uh, especially if they are based around certain characters, we want to make sure we have voice acting for them. So the, the amount of time involved, like we had, had to plan really far ahead in order to make that voice acting, um, it, or make sure we had, had those assets ready. So I, it, it, like I said, if this base is, is successful, we, it's, I have no idea what the future of State of Decay will bring, but if we uh, look into more f facilities that offer quests, this is our proof of concept to, to see if players um, if it respond well to it, if it works well with our um, development uh, pipeline, that kind of thing. And we also brought back the shootable bell. Okay, so uh, one only one question, Brant. Are you ready to run? Oh, you're going to shoot the bell? Yeah. <laughs> I'm running to the car right now. <laughs> All right, so here we go. All right, let's do it. Oh, that's right. You guys are on lethal, too. <laughs> All right, you're driving. You ready to drive? Uh, uh, yeah, I'm ready to drive now. All right, it's three o'clock. Let's go. All right, we're headed to we're headed to uh, Fort Marshall next, everybody. So let's bring that up. All righty. So, uh, when it comes to Fort Marshall, um, Fort Marshall is uh, only two thousand influence. It takes eight people, I think, to move in, um, but it is so worth it. It's the first eight-person base that we've had. Um, that is only 2000 influence. And I love the fact that, uh, I love the fact that we were able to play around with the costs and the locations and exactly what it's all about. It's, it's got a great defensive layout. Uh, and I will, uh, we'll talk about that more once we get there, but for now, if let's we get there. You will get there, uh, <laughs> one way or another, we'll get there hell or high water. All right. So, uh, we'll put this up and then I will come back and focus on the game. Uh, not that I can do much other than pray that Brant doesn't kill us. Okay. <laughs> All right, Lucy, do you want to talk a little bit more about Fort Marshall? Oh, yeah. Uh, so in terms of our overall goals for the map, we, you know, we, we we plan to have a starter base. We plan to have a couple of, of big end goal bases and then a couple of middle ones. Uh, Pterodactyl Park is one of our middle ones. Uh, the Red Talon base is technically counted as one of our middle ones for, the, for players who uh, plan to grow their community with more than five or six people. And... Marshall, uh, Fort Marshall is definitely one of your end game ones uh, that you can try, especially if you are saving your Marshall content to the last minute because of how compressed everything is and how scary the the plague wall zone is. I uh, the um, the story of the the Marshall base was also it has a very you know unique location, uh, convenient to the rest of of things that are going on down there. You're right next door to Tressy. Uh, and you have, um, but we, we needed to kind of fit with the theme that the military was there and then they had to have good reason to leave. Like they didn't just leave because they got tired and needed a vacation. They, they were completely wiped 
uh, or pushed out of the map by force. So the facility designs need to reflect that. Uh, we wanted to make sure that, you know, that it was clear they had come here with a plan. So we have things like uh, a built-in kitchen and I... Uh, you have something extra in your slots on these pictures. <laughs> um, do, do I? I think so. Oh, um, anyways. Let me, see. let me see. What's in there? Are you oh, supposed I've, to show that? I have no okay. idea. I don't know what you're talking about. I would Okay, never mind. I'm, I'm, pay, I, I, I think no, I'm imagining things. Pay no attention to the thing behind the curtain. Uh, anyways, so in terms of endgame bases, uh, another uh, endgame base that worked really well for us in previous maps was the Firehouse because of uh, players uh, really responded well to having a bunch of built-in facilities just ready for them when they moved in. Uh, so we did pretty much a, a very similar thing with this one, where there's a lot of pre-built facilities. There's barracks, there's uh, you know the, ki the kitchen I mentioned, there's a latrine, there's a medical facility, and uh, I think a shooting range. And uh, the only thing the player needs to do is repair them, because they were completely wrecked as the zombie hordes came in and came and went and as the military was pulling out. So the... You know, in terms of facilities, this place is well stocked, and then you also have additional slots to do things with. Uh, so if if you are still hoping to to build your leader facilities there, you can. Uh, I'm also it's not a facility technically, but I'm I'm also just a big fan of the defensive towers this space has. Uh, you can just look around and see so much, and of course shoot a lot of things. And you're not even on them right now, Joe. What are you doing? I'm I'm getting rid of the things that I could see from those wonderful towers that are built here. But but you didn't shoot from the towers? No, not yet. Here, I've got... Uh, there's. It's lethal. There are plenty of zombies. Okay, fair enough. So, go up to these. Here's here's the, here's the one tower that overlooks the parking lot. Oops. If I could shoot straight. Alright, so that yeah, guy's gonna come the in the thing door. That's, the thing that's different about these towers is unlike our other bases where we had one tower, this one has three. Um, the Red Talon also has... Uh, when you fix up that facility, it also has three spots that are um, covering three of the walls. So this was a bit of a departure from from uh, how we'd mechanically set up the towers before as well. Um, but uh, yeah, like Lucy was saying, this is all part of the the narrative that the military came back and um, reestablished itself, cleaned up a little bit, um, but then also ultimately failed um, once again. But uh, this was a much stronger strong point than, say, like the checkpoint. This is what they call a forward operating base, and uh, it's where a, a good number of people would have would have been stationed to uh, to do operations within the Marshall area. All right. So uh, to go back to the point of what Lucy was talking about, once you set once you uh, repaired the the guard towers here, uh, your sentry that's that's on this one will keep this street almost all the way over to Blaine's Grocery. We'll keep it just completely safe. Um, and then this one, as I already pointed out over here, this one will pretty much watch your parking lot as you're coming and going. Uh, and this one, this one watches if you're coming in the back, to, if you're coming in the back way. Uh, also, there tends to be like a, a horde that kind of comes in this general direction from somewhere over there. Uh, and this person is pretty much uh, in charge of taking care of that. So this is, it's a very defensible base. One of the other things that I really like is there's door number one. There's door number two. And there's door number three, right? And so like, if you're, when you're under siege, you can just pop out. You're right at door number three. You pop out, you're at door number two. And, well, actually, from here, you can just do door, door number two and door number one. And so you just kind of go back and forth. It takes a little bit of, of getting used to, you know, kind of like the rat maze that you you, you had you may, you may have had to go through if you ever lived in dorms or barracks or anything like that. Um, but once it's done, it's 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 probably one of the it's one of the better bases um, in the game. But it's still only third best on this map, according to my math. Come over here, Joe. I'll show you my favorite part about the space. Okay. Oh, the yeah. memorial. So, this Eric wasn't... Tan and Doghouse Actual 
Which Eric Tan was the was the soldier who died at the end of uh, one. At the end of one. Uh, and, and Doghouse then, Actual was from Lifeline. And Doghouse Actual was voiced by none other than some uh, guy. Some a guy really was. bad, a really terrible VO choice, but you know <laughs> we had a budget, so. We did. But this was this was also uh, important to me to to um, just to show uh, that. You know, I support veterans and and appreciate the sacrifices they've made because that's that's how they um, celebrate the life of of their friends who they've lost. So well, and um, if you don't mind me saying, Brent, when we went to uh, when we went to Pax uh, Pax Prime just recently, uh, one of the first places we stopped was StackUp.org. Yeah. Um, so you know, if you've got extra money and you like helping out veterans, you could do a lot worse than that. Um, but uh, then, then to give them some help, they do great things. Um, oh, hey, look, it's a feral. And look, there's a uh, there's a horde coming from right where you said it would come from. <laughs> yep. Nice. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> I had to show up just a little bit there. All right, so. Um, so the next place we're going to go to, and what I consider to be only the second most powerful base on this map, is actually my current home. So here we go. Uh, welcome folks to the farmland compound, where you and your friends too can help people get better. Um, I gotta get driving though, so we're gonna skip over to this while we travel and let Lucy talk her talk. Yeah, uh, farmland compound was definitely meant always meant to be our biggest base on the map uh it is you know themed after this narrative that it, for at one point or another the 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 homestead there was fortified and turned into like a refugee camp for during the early days of the, the crisis uh and so there's a number of facilities that kind of benefit that and you have the wide open spaces of the farm uh characterized in four large slots uh, we went back and forth about whether or not we actually should have four large slots after uh, talking about some of the built-in facilities because that's a lot. It's it's uh, We don't have too many bases like that and they usually have other drawbacks. Uh, whereas this one you have um, a built-in medical facility and a built-in kitchen and some built-in sleeping areas uh, that you know provide a, a bunch of additional benefit to the player. Also the windows in that the the infirm the um the medical building you can't jump through them so they are safe from zombies that to me is like is a really huge plus <laughs> yes uh no ferals coming through the window yeah they All have right. to use the doors like everyone else yep oh well. although I, i'm not sure if they use the doors just like everybody else but they do use the doors um one note art wise on this oh, uh the um, the radio room, which is up in that, that tower in the center of it, um, is, uh, after our next update, will be much larger. Oh, there's a feral sitting on my face. Okay, ouch. He ate my spleen. I'm watching Joe dispatch this feral. <laughs> and then you got, to, and then you got bored, I guess. Well, I didn't, I didn't want you to take all the glory. <laughs> No, right. but the uh, right now, um, occasionally you'll see an NPC sitting here by the uh, signal booster running in circles. That's just that NPC desperately trying to get to the radio. So I've made some changes to this, and eventually uh, that will be a larger uh, tower that they will actually climb up in. But. All right. So this is the this is the clinic area, uh, the recovery bed, and the surgery area. Um, now your interact is right in the middle of the building, but it's this is all your infirmary and, and that's that's one of the favorite things that i really that i do enjoy about this space oh we've got a juggernaut friend oh he's actually in the walls somebody with a really big gun we got plenty of somebody's with a really big gun all right let's yeah, go talk got... to let's go talk to ohio and let's see what he's got to say you got uh you got one of your people up there with the Oto howlitzer that I think took care of business on that uh <laughs> well it's a it's a good gun for taking care of business um, sure it is let's not Whatever. see you later Ohio 
You just you just uh, head on back to Columbus. So the someone asked why the medical facility or why the beds aren't in the house and the medical facility <clears throat> in the garages, and this was actually um, a mechanical reason. I so I wanted to make sure that these bases were provided the, the player with at least you know the, providing variance and experience uh, and like base building challenges uh, or things you have to balance. Uh, that you can't find in other bases. So in a lot of our maps, a lot of our built-ins, are, are a lot of our bases have built-in beds, built-in kitchens. Uh, we didn't have very many built-in medical facilities. Uh, we had a lot of kind of storage boosters, and you know the the obvious thing would to make uh, would be to to use the the um, uh, why we can use it the garage. Um, Separate thing. Sorry, uh, I'm getting distracted. <laughs> so, sorry, Lucy. We're just leaving you out <laughs> to hang there. You're doing great, though. You're doing great. Um, uh, but yeah, so we wanted. Um, so putting the, the, the medical facility made sense because in the apocalypse, you want to keep your injured people safe. Uh, so the um, players, a lot of people would expect the kitchen to be the house because that is what we do in a lot of other bases. But for this one, we decided it would be better to make it the medical. Uh, and so the the beds are actually out here, right? Like these are the, this is the bunkhouse? Yes. Yeah, and so the, the bunkhouse is a, is a huge thing, you know, on a lot of ranches like this out outdoors, uh, they they would have a bunkhouse like this. And so this, this totally makes sense from uh, you know the idea that this is this is like the big ranch in the in the area. You've got the four large slats, which makes it uh, on par, at least in terms of being able to play around with uh, what you want to do within a base and and how you want how you want to play. It certainly puts it on par with uh, the lumber mill in um, that other map, Providence Ridge. Providence. Yes. <laughs> that other map that I don't that care about map. anymore. That other map that I don't care about anymore because this one's awesome. <laughs> um, and then so you know you can you, you got a lot to, you got a lot to play around with here. You got a shooting range. You got some storage in the in the barn out there. Um, uh, also, I did notice that somebody was talking about that the only good use for the forge is to create this. There's there's how you make the there's how you make the coffee can mace. To answer the previous question and also to to prove to Maxi that there is one more. Uh, one thing that I have noticed now, I don't know if this was a change that you made to the forge or not, Lucy. So, mm -hmm. you know, stop me if, if I'm wrong, but it seems, it seems to me that, uh, in converting materials to parts via the forge, this is actually better than the CNC mill, which used to be the yes. most effective. Yes. Uh, I didn't make this change. My, uh, assumption is that because the forge is only unlocked by having, uh, you know, leveling up your skill to a certain point, right? Yep. Uh, so it's because uh, you can you can loot C and C mills fairly easily. So the, it felt underclimactic or anticlimactic rather to have something you gain from leveling up your skill for so long be less powerful than than the facility mod. I don't know who exactly made that change though. I would. Yeah, it's, it was, uh, I have to it, look into that. It's probably you or Brian, but you know, whoever it was, they were really smart. Um, but I did, I did want to point that out, and especially on lethal, uh, that efficiency to parts is is pretty powerful. All right, and then finally, and the thing which I'll probably get skewered on Reddit and everywhere else for the base that I think is the most powerful uh, is actually this one. Which where are we? Yes, it's only a thousand influence, folks. And yes, you can move there and it's got rainbows and happiness and sunshine all over the place. But it's the factory. And we'll talk about why uh, in a little bit. But just to know this. This is, in my estimation, at least in my way, current way of thinking, the most powerful base on this map. All right, Lucy. Take us away and then we'll talk. I'll talk more about Real why. Real quick before Lucy starts, I would also like to say that uh, the farm base is the only base that was previously uh, a home base in SOD1. All the other ones are brand new. 
<laughs> yeah, people are calling this one the bunny base. I, I definitely think it's it's not something I designed. This is it, the art is all Brant's work, but all the um, the the visuals uh, of this base for theming are some of my favorite things in the game. I uh, with this space, um, we knew there was going to be a factory in Marshall. Uh, I pitched in the meeting. Why do we always do industrial factories? This is the apocalypse. Clearly, the machines aren't really useful for much an anymore. So, I uh, why not try to make it something else? Um, I forget how exactly we landed at making uh, a built-in garden, but. That was pitched at some point, and then, of course, we needed an incinerator because we had the smokestack. Uh, so, after, um, you know, just trying to... Honestly, Brent, do you remember how we, we wound up with the... the, the hip, like, the tranquility theme? Because I'm having trouble remembering it, so, like, genuinely. Originally, um, the... the um, the first idea came from Kevin Pun, who was the uh, original art director on State of Decay 2. Um, he was he was starting to lament the fact that we um, that we didn't have much color in our drab mm. um, our drab uh, apocalypse. So he started doing some some colorful paintings on on various buildings. And um, when you had suggested that we that we sort of take uh, a base and and twist it, make it something less obvious. Um, then all of that started to coalesce really quickly. Once we figured out that this was going to be the spot for for that sort of interesting base, then we started thinking about what they could do that would that would turn this structure on its side. And putting a uh, a garden up on top. Um, right, it was that elevated structure that we were yeah. that we were trying to figure out what to put up there that would make sense. Okay, this is, yeah, this is coming back to me now. And of course, and then, the you know, that's a bit of a what, fix go ahead. No, just what, once you got your hands on it and, and like started putting in some of the early versions of the meditation garden assets, like we were all sold on it. And uh, we players, I don't know if if we haven't even shown off the best part of that garden yet, but I more aesthetics. <laughs> oh. Uh, one of my first impressions when I came to claim this base is right here. Um, nature uh, finds a way. So, so yes, nice. That touch. was so a tree growing in the factory was something I actually really wanted for the abandoned sawmill in um, uh, Providence uh, Ridge. Providence Ridge. Uh, it had a perfect area for it. Uh, but one reason or another, it, it never got placed. And so uh, since I was um, doing the bases in this one, I made sure I just put a tree there. And then as as we started developing the idea around the base, I was like, well, if they're going to build the Tranquility, or if the Tranquility Garden is going to be up on top, they're going to see this as an opportunity uh, to um, have another, you know, like augment this this tree that's growing in the cracks they're going to start augmenting it with other fun stuff. And so um, they turned it into like a little indoor garden. And then uh, Mark Lautenbach, uh, I asked him to, to help me out with, with something that they might paint on the floor. And he came up with this rock and lily pad sort of motif that then leads you through the base to the koi pond as people are, you know, trying to make this um, a really nice livable space that's, that's somewhat tranquil, except when zombies like that are eating your spleen. Sorry. I was... <laughs> so I'm just kind of walking around. You guys saw me highlighting the uh, the incinerator there. Uh, now the incinerator is a, it's a new and unique uh, um, facility here in in the factory, and you can burn one of every. Uh, basically, you like burn one of every uh, resource in order to gain. 25 morale for 46 minutes um which by the way i thought that was absolute genius um and for people like me especially who play lethal or or just or just in general who are having difficulty uh with morale this place is wonderful uh you you just spend a few resources and you've got plus 25 morale here um now you've got all kinds and of and it gives to be you storage buffs 
Oh yeah, and it gives you plus five yeah. to storage, but yeah, um, on on each one, so you can you can keep going and exceeding by burning just a few things. You can keep exceeding your normal uh, your normal storage limits uh, because it helps keep down decay. Because theoretically, you're 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 burning all of the older stuff um, first. Is that what you were gonna say? Did I steal your thunder there? Lucy? No, you're always burning the new stuff. No, yes, no, you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> And then, the, of course, uh, the meditation garden that everybody loves and also mm -hmm. is the biggest reason why I think this base is the most powerful um, on this map is because you can also attach uh, like a compost bin or you can attach uh, one of the things that another of the uh, the spaces that comes from um, Tressy. For those of you who found it, great. For those of you, and you know, for those of you who don't finish Tressy's quest line, okay. <laughs> um, and find out what I'm talking about. But basically, you can make it between, um, if you have an herbalist like I do, uh, and you uh, also put something on it to boost its output, you can make five meds from this one one small slot facility, I think is what it is. It's a, is it a small slot or a large slot? I don't remember. Um, so if you're careful just inside this one base, uh, you can take care of your med needs. You can take care of your food needs. Plus, you've got two large slots. This is the best 1,000 influence you will ever spend on a base, ever, anywhere, for eternity. Um, so, I can't believe you didn't say anything about the benefit of being able to play soccer. Not yet. We've got, we've got hordes coming. We're, we're having friends for dinner. If we had had the time, I I wanted to add an achievement for <laughs> getting like tracking, you know, how far you get the, those exercise balls from the base. Yeah. Like kick it all the way to Marshall or 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 all the way to um, Figurefield rather or something like oh silly God. like that. You know what would be really fun though is if the zombie like if you like somehow could fill these with like zombie like zombies and just kick them. And, and then just watch the zombies like, like, play ball. Like the catnip toys that you fill with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? Like fill it with zombie and just let the zombies go crazy as they chase the ball. They're like, oh, oh. <laughs> no, am I the only one who thinks of that? Oh. Well, it's, we can make, uh, we can <laughs> add it to the, our, our ideas list. <laughs> Aimbot? Oh, I don't think so. But anyway, it's, the, it's aim snap, but okay. Uh. We just a zombie oh, zombie threat at home. Shouldn't be a problem, though. All right, so where are we at in time? We are. Oh, we are almost right on time. So, uh, that I really love. I really love this base. Hopefully that 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 didn't start too much of a thing. I, I think in terms of power, this base is awesome. The artwork on this is absolutely amazing. Uh, it's super bright. Um, also one of the things that I noticed here is Kiki. Trig, if you're watching, congratulations. Um, uh, there's your there's your Easter egg. I, we, we found it. We found it. We love you. It's in the space. Okay. <laughs> they may be streaming right now too. Wednesday's their usual state of decay day. <laughs> oh well, there you go. Maybe that maybe they're watching and maybe we just spoiled oh. it for them and I just feel bad, but I don't. We'll see the recording later. Maybe. All right. Yeah. Moderator sleeping. No, it's probably just they sent five messages at once. I'm sure they're I'm sure they're banned by now. I probably I probably spent more time uh, arting that base than any of the others, just because it was so much fun and it was huge, so it needed a lot of detail. But uh, um, but that one was definitely worth it. I'm really glad that uh, Lucy, we went with your idea to mix it up because. Uh, I love the different flavor and um, retasking of that of that space. It just feels right. Now, another reason why I think it's one of the most powerful bases on this map is this little thing right here. This shortcut, it may not be as central as the farmland compound, but it's pretty close. Uh, and it doesn't it, it doesn't take a lot, but you can make you can expand it. I've got a community of 11 that live there in the factory right now uh, They are happier than clams. They haven't been that happy since they moved to lethal zones. So You know, I, I, I love that base and everything that it does for me um, Not that it, not that the others aren't bad but 
I there's definitely we were trying to build a base for varied needs of course so uh tranquility definitely fits um the morale and meds niches uh which we, we don't quite cover on a lot of other places because normally we expect players to build their own morale facilities or have me you know make the take the the coffee outpost or some or something like that yeah exactly and but uh it felt like such a departure and such a, a, a just a, a fresh view, and I, I really appreciate it. So, anyway, thanks, y'all. That was super awesome. Also, side note, um, I'm I'm seeing some chatter about the the ISB mission. Um, we are aware uh, that it's not quite working as expected, and we're going to be patching that as soon as possible. So, or, or you know, rather, whenever we're planning to release a patch, I. We're, we're you know trying, what I mean? Yeah, we're 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 making sure that the patch doesn't break anything more. Yes, yeah. exactly. Uh, there has not been a stream covering the landmark outpost on Trumbull. I uh, we probably don't need a whole stream to cover that. Um, yeah. And I want to I want to save as much as we can for Jeffrey. He might want to take a okay. look at that. Okay. Yeah, we'll on, leave that on, one on to Jeffrey. Next stream. Um, because we only have a few minutes left, and uh, we're, we've probably got a backload backlog of questions. I hope. Uh. Or are we pretty much up to date? Let's see. Um, I think we're I'm, up to date. I'm just I'm scrolling through the, the stuff on Slack. So okay. Joe, uh, in defending this base. Uh, this, um, where I am up in the barn is my favorite spot. Oh, just standing up in the barn? Yep. It makes it so you never die. I'll give you that. You cover, you get to cover two gates as well. But you don't get to cover the one that's under your feet. That's what the rest of my people are for. It's for this one gate? Yes. Okay. Don't say it like that. <laughs> For this one gate? <laughs> yes, for that gate. <laughs> well, see, I was not going to go up this ladder because um, I didn't want to talk about I didn't know if it actually led up anywhere because I was I was afraid. I was it afraid. leads up to the to the hay, hay loft. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. That's good because we have another ladder that probably... Oh, no! I just found a bug by dropping my butt. <laughs> that's funny. It didn't. I didn't run I, into that bug. You want to see how that, you that, do I it? I think that. I think that's just. You, you know, not using the ladder. That that's, yeah, that's a, well, I should technically be a, a feature. It's not a. It's not I a. Shouldn't be allowed to not use the ladder. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when Fair there's enough. a fence that I just walked through. All right. So night is falling, and we've got some of the light on, so we can talk about we can talk about uh, lighting and. Megan, which we meant to do before, but we didn't really have the lighting opportunity to talk about it. So, uh, Brant, if you want to, well, um, talk a little more about that. I, well, all I can say is that um, Megan is a goddamn superhero. Uh, not only is she doing community work, she's doing um, she's doing a lot of our uh, uh, marketing work. Uh, she said uh, she has been. A lighting artist in the past at other studios and seeing as we were operating without a lighting artist or a lighting technician uh on this map she bravely stood up and said you know what i'm going to figure out the spaghetti nightmare that is your two off the shelf uncooperative lighting systems and bend them to her will and um i believe that uh this is the best lit map we've ever done and it's it's uh uh, mostly down to her, um, kicking so much butt. Um, this game, uh, this game would not look nearly as good as it does without her stepping up and um, seeing a need and, and filling that need. Um, and she did it with uh, with a lot of frustration too. She dealt with a lot of frustration because I'm changing the map or I'm changing the bases all the time, and then the Valkyrie folks were changing the bases and. <laughs> Megan would just be like, uh, I noticed you changed stuff. I guess I'll go fix it, you know. No, she um, she was just the hero of the base layouts. Like, there's, there's so many. And there were, there were like, bugs with the lighting system, too, that she had to, to, to deal with as well. So it's, Megan, just, you know, if you're watching, 
just know we love you. We appreciate your work, and yep. they they look awesome. And Super the, the lights hero. are really well placed, and everything is just so soft. Uh, and nobody wants to be wants to take a bath um, in <laughs> in the dark. So you know that's that's really well done. Um, especially when you're you know trying to get all clean for like surgery or something. Uh, but you know the, the the lighting all over the place. Um, you know I, I had talked about uh, the the red talon base, but everything here is just super awesome and and really understated. Look at the look at this along the the, the wall there. Just everything looks so great. Megan's Megan's probably uh, our moderator on Twitch right now, and so hopefully yep. her face has gone red enough. Uh, about us gushing about her, but there's just not enough that we can say. Megan, you're super awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, you yep. you you deserve to be up here and getting re recognition for what you saw, and I was glad to see you do that for the dev stream last week. So anyway, awesome, um, awesome, awesome. A couple little things about this base uh, that will change in another hot fix later will be the rocks that are in the middle of the road down here are now will be gone because I crashed my car too many times on these friggin' rocks <laughs> that, uh, yes. that I went in yesterday and just deleted them. So um, hopefully, hopefully <laughs> Doug Juno, who is our level guy, uh, uh, our level person, isn't going to be too mad that I've gone in and, and, and destroyed those rocks. But man. Okay, so if we suddenly start having issues with the parking spaces, we know it's your fault. Yes. You can yeah. blame yeah. it all on me. And uh, most mostly if... We it, mostly if you hit rocks there that aren't visible anymore, we know who to call and to blame. Oh, well, uh, go ahead. Hopefully, hopefully uh, everybody will, <laughs> will forget that I said that, and we can just blame it on Doug. Awesome, <laughs> awesome. That's great. Uh, one other thing I wanted to mention about the farm base for any of you who are having issues with the um, the built-in beds have a passive that activates and deactivates at weird times. There is a fix coming for that as well. That thing has been, uh, it's kind it's kind of like the, so, I don't know. It's, it's like, it's like the thing you have to keep duct taping and you think it's fine. You think you don't need to do anything else with it. And then suddenly something else breaks a after you've tested it. So I, uh, you know, game development, it, game development is hard. Fixing things is harder. Uh, and of course, sometimes when you put one thing straight, it realize you realize that that thing was curved to keep the other thing from blowing up completely. Yep. Uh, and so, you know, thank you for your patience and thank you all for being here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, we're getting close to the end. Uh, well, I would like to say one. Early? I would I would like to say one last thing. Um, uh, huge thanks to Lucy because um, had she not come in with enthusiasm and and really wanting to make things more interesting, we probably wouldn't have um, tried to do some of the, the new things with facilities and bases that we did. Um, we would have probably stuck with what was safe and known and just plugged them in. Um, but uh, Lucy showed up with, um, with these ideas that um, thankfully there was no one around to say, no way, we can't do that. And Lucy went, okay, I'm gonna do them and people will love them. And that's brave and you have made the, again this map is the best thing we've done and so um in in large part to you pushing forward some new ideas and getting us old dogs to uh, learn some new tricks so uh, thank you lucy for your hard work on this as well all right i'm kicking you out thank now you. brent so that i can <laughs> pause the, so i can pause the game properly all right um all right so that's that's it for our show this week, folks. I want to say a big thank you to Lucy, to Brant, and to all of the everybody else on the team that has just made this this uh, this update such a success. And thank you to all of the players out there. You guys are doing great. You're helping us. You're reporting your issues. Uh, thank you to the beta players who were testing through some of the stuff and some of the the issues. Uh, keep reporting them. We are tracking them, and we will we will keep fixing as as we continue to support the game um so you know um just just keep reporting and keep engaging with us we love you here um and we couldn't do this without you thank you for making our jobs possible brant um i can't say anything that you didn't just say uh we owe it all to 
to the people who are watching us today. And uh, hopefully we can continue to uh, provide new and exciting things for you. And Lucy, what would you like to say? Thank you all so much for playing. I, uh, and for the kind words, I, I'm really glad that I uh, that people like the, the content and we're you know at any feedback I, uh, you guys want to contribute for stuff that's broken, please please tell me because, you never know. <laughs> yeah, we can we can always try. If nothing else, we can always try. Um, so anyway, thank you everybody, and uh, hopefully I press the right button here. Is this where it gets awkward, Joe? I think so, because I'm not sure. I, I, I hope I pressed that right button. Jeffrey I has mean, an awkward it, button. It'd be really awkward if you press the wrong button. <laughs> yeah. Like just it, the, the it, broad keep broadcasting forever it, button. It would have been <laughs> even more awkward if I'd made a dumb joke on the screen that just popped up. Uh oh. Yeah. Some Am people. I happy that I can't see it? I don't know. Do you like having the trifecta called trifecta pack called a uh, Neapolitan mixture of weapon flavors? I like it. <laughs> OK. <laughs>